hope you're all well. I wanted to read out to you um, tonight a little bit and just go over uh, eight or ten of the most frequently asked questions from the weekend um, and from today. What we've been doing a little bit differently than a lot of places is we've been responding to um, kind of each and every email personally rather than group them. And our hope there was that people did, you know, it, it would kind of remove the warehousing effect and made people kind of realize they were trying to take each each student and family member individually. So we've been doing that. And then tonight, what I did yesterday a little bit in my email, and then tonight is kind of put together um, some of the more frequently asked questions. We're going to do it again regularly throughout the week. We'll do as many of these as people need. Um, but also, don't surrender on the idea of, of reaching out to us directly. I, I, we still like that the best. Uh, it's not an imposition. We'll respond to every single one. And then we can respond more publicly like this to some of the broader um, questions. So, so let's get started. One of the biggest questions I've been hearing is relative to contact tracing and testing. One of the misconceptions that um, the media is giving is that we actually do testing in the schools. In other words, that our nurse is swabbing people um, in the nurse's office in the schools. And um, schools are not hospital-like settings for, for testing. We are involved with getting people testing if they don't get it through their primary care physician. And we certainly have wor worked with Huntington Hospital already, um, as well as most of the local physicians. So we have no problem doing that. But we don't ever want anyone to think that we usurp um, a parent's uh, and a physician's connection. That's, that's not what we do. So certainly, when there is a suspected case, when, when, when someone goes home with symptoms, when there's a fever above the 100.4 and other symptoms, and the doctor agrees there's a suspected case, that's when we um, recommend, and in many cases require, if we have to, a, a test before someone comes back to school. Okay? And Upon positive tests, and again, we work with the families in that, and the physician. Upon a positive test, then we contact trace. And to be honest, even when we recommend the test, we'll probably start the tracing, so we're ahead of the game. But then we contact trace. And our internal contact tracing is done from an education standpoint. Who in our educational world came into contact with this student or staff member that might be positive for COVID? That's our tracing. The Board of Health will do their own. They'll work on families, and we had a family party and whatnot. Um, we don't take that Board of Health responsibility from them, but we have our own in terms of the school. Uh, that, that's pretty, a pretty hefty responsibility. So we'll work with families. We'll contact Trace. And then we have a 14-day quarantine for anyone that will have come into contact with that individual who's now tested positive from any of our school settings. So, I mean, let's be honest, at the elementary level, it's a little more contained, right? In that it could be 22 students, if you add the bus, and 25, 30, uh, and a staff member or two. At the high school level, middle school level, we could be talking about 130 students and staff members. That's a reality of what we're dealing with. Again, um, whenever I mention that to people, they go, oh my gosh, and they hold their head. Um, I agree, oh my gosh, but I remind them, we didn't create COVID, right? Um, and and our, our, the best we can do is work with the deck of cards that's in our hands right now. So our job is to contact Trace back and keep things as safe as we can. That's one of the reasons that we're being really tight with things like not using the cafeterias for big groups because we did a tabletop exercise that actually had almost another 150 students contact traced and quarantined over a possible case because of the cafeteria. So again, our goal is, and again, we know lunch is important, and, and, and if I was a kid, I, that'd be the first thing on my mind is to, to be with my friends during lunch, but we also don't want to put another 100 some odd students out anytime we have to contact trace. It's just a reality of what we're dealing with. Better times are coming, but we need to kind of deal with, with that reality right now. So that's the contact tracing plan. That's why we're doing masks um, throughout the day. 
That's why we're doing the sneeze guards um, throughout the day, just to, to really get to a point where we can limit the quarantining as much as we can. Look, we're all praying that four or five weeks, people have gone back to school all over the place, right? And it's been real smooth and without incident, and then we understand that we can start to loosen some of those things. But right now, we need to begin in a way that adds the maximum level of safety we can. So that's contact tracing and testing. Um, Masks. A thousand questions on masks. And it seems to be a lot of people, masks seem to have become a political lightning rod for whatever the reason. And so we get a lot of people upset that other people are saying that they don't want to wear a mask. We have other people saying uh, we do want to wear a mask. We're not getting involved in that. What we need to tell people is you need to wear a mask when you're with us. In class, uh, except on designated mask breaks. So I get a lot of, what's a mask break? Obviously, mask breaks weren't in ed Education 101 for any of us. So we're learning what a mask break is through the local positions, through the health department. And our goal, it's age appropriate. Obviously, the little ones need more than the big ones. It's weather dependent. It's activity dependent. And we're going to be putting breaks in based on what's realistic and humane, like we would want done for our own kids, like are being done for our own kids in their districts. So that's what a mass break is. We get a whole lot of questions about what if people don't comply? Um, and what's the discipline if people don't comply? And it's really no different than any other discipline. The goal is to get compliance. The goal is to get people to work with us as a team so we keep our kids safe and we can bring as many people back to school as we can. That's the goal. There will always be someone here or there that tries to challenge that. I don't want to make um, the issue about the one or two people that will challenge it, we'll deal with that. There, there will be consequences. People will be, they'll deal with the discipline just as they do for any other rule infraction. But I'm going to believe that most of our people are going to rise to the occasion and, and do the right thing by the kids. So that's what we're going to believe. That's what we're going to, we're going to hope for. Sneeze guards. Um, we bought the sneeze guards. guards. You know, you have the, the, the incident where I forgot to take the film off, so that gave a good belly laugh to a lot of you. Um, I, I know that. Um, but with the sneeze guards, they're an extra layer of protection, an extra layer. At the elementary level, they remain in the classroom, right, on the desk, because that's your, that's your area, really, for the whole day. Um, at the secondary level, and this is a, a difficult thing for people to understand, but because students switch classes, uh, they have to carry it with them. And why are students switching classes? We, we understand that a lot of you had hoped we could keep students in their room. Um, not that you wanted that, but it would be safer. And, and that's what a lot of people felt. The reality of secondary school scheduling, um, and in my former life I was a high school scheduler, is that the com combinations are really almost limitless in terms of you never have the same five or ten students move in a block throughout the day. When we actually looked at what it would be like to keep students together, it didn't even resemble uh, secondary students day. So there was nothing that even came close to um, the value of a true diversified secondary school schedule. So we called around. No one has an answer for cleaning desks in between periods. There's not an answer for um, individual sterilization in between periods. But the masks and the sneeze guards do give us a tremendous amount of protection between those periods. Um, and then obviously at the end of the day, at the secondary level, everything is sterilized. All right. At the elementary level, it's the students in their desk all day, so there's really not another person coming in. A lot of questions over wipes. Can people bring sanitizing wipes in? We, uh, we checked. Uh, they're, they're, they're fine. Um, you know, we'll always want to make sure they're the right type, but I, but I believe that um, the, the ones that are selling in the stores now are all rated and fine for, for the average population. Um, we will have extras on hand in the classrooms. We can't make a student clean a desk. That's against the regulations. But a lot of parents want their children to. And before they sit down, they give it a clean. The health department's telling us that um, that's fine. Um, how much it does or doesn't do to protect people, that's really in your family's choice in terms of what you wipe down. But we will have additional wipes in the rooms. Um, there is an international shortage of these wipes right now, as you might imagine because everyone's buying them. Some districts are actually making their own. So we're gonna do both. We have 
as much as we can of our own in stock. We're going to ask you to send them in. It, it would be child if they choose. Um, and we'll have some for people that can't do that. We want to make this as manageable as possible. And, and we want to be a team on this, and, and it's the only way we're going to get through something like that. So that's the story on, on wipes that we've gotten some questions on. Um, difference between elementary instruction and secondary instruction in terms of both the hybrid and remote. In the elementary school, it looks like we have more than enough students for dedicated um, remote classes. In other words, it just makes sense because it's a different experience. Remember, we have the two-teacher model at the elementary level, right? So one teacher is working with you in the class, learning relatively new material. The other teacher is working at home, doing things with that material you learned yesterday. That's the elementary model. If you're a remote student, you have the one teacher, and they're working with you on both those packages together from home. High school, middle school, is a little bit different because, first of all, there are much, much fewer students selecting particular uh, remote options. And even when they did, the courses are so diverse that you don't get um, critical mass of young people, of, of, of students, in, in a section, if that makes sense. So they're going to be put in the regular sections. Now, a hybrid high school section is totally different. Remember, dual teacher model at the elementary level, secondary level, the, the hybrid model has the teacher working in class, but they're not teaching a new thing only every other day. They're working with their students in class in the hybrid model. And then those students, so they're working on the War of 1812 on a Monday. The students who are home that Monday, the other half of the class, they're getting the War of 1812 from home. They're, they're logging on, they're getting different pieces from the lesson at home, some live stream, some recorded. Um, they come in the next day, they're past the War of 1812. So when they're in class the next day, they're moving on to the next thing, and the students in class, right, are moving on to the next thing. The students at home, they're also moving on to the next thing. So it's not repeated, if that makes sense. So the students that are remote and that are sprinkled into those classes, they're just working from home both days. So they're just logging on both days from home it makes it a lot easier at the secondary level to move in and out of remote and hybrid, to move in and out of classes, to come back to school at a certain point. If a whole class has to go remote, like we just talked about with possible contact tracing, so that's why it's being done that way. What we find, the dual teacher model at the elementary level is better, it's more age appropriate for little ones that need more teacher contact time, and the hybrid model at the secondary level offers the option of more flexibility and, and uh, course-specific work. So those are the two differences there. So please don't worry. I had some people say, um, lots of people say, uh, are they going to be you know regular teachers teaching the remote? Yes, they're our staff. It's our people. Um, at the elementary level, the, uh, the, the, the um, support teachers will be the second teacher. At the, at the secondary level, it's the teachers if that makes sense. So it will be all regular teachers teaching those courses, all right, with a lot of good uh, new energy around, too. So we'll actually have both positive things going on. We want to make something positive out of a real tough, uh, tough situation. So finding the glass half full is a challenge, but we're doing it. Um, backpacks. Yes, backpacks are permitted. They're fine. They're legal. Have at it with your backpacks. We've talked about... Um, Lockers really not being used at the, at the secondary levels for, for a variety of reasons right now. Um, and having been a high school principal and an extremely disorganized high school student at one point in my life, you can imagine what those lockers look like sometimes. So it's probably best that lockers stay off limits for now, but backpacks are in. Go ahead and, and, and use them. You can keep your wipes in there. You can keep your sanitizer in there. All the other things that are important uh, you know, to our, to our students. So hopefully that puts some minds at ease. Um, drop off and pickups. This is a huge question out there. Based on the information we get tomorrow, tonight and tomorrow, on who's coming to school, we'll start to have an idea on what our bus loops are look like. Once we have that idea, the principals are spending the week. Um, I don't want to direct a drop off and pickup model from district office. That's bad business because 
um, principals really know what their building needs and their staff knows what their building needs. So they're going to develop drop-off and pickup models based on the amount of students they have coming to school, the amount of buses are rolling, the amount of drivers they have, and the amount of staff they have. And, and those will all be put together in the next week or two. But we know that, that um, that's important to people. The other thing that's very, very, very important to people is when, um, w when you'll know, and I just want to check if any emails come in, is when you'll know um, who might or might not be in that first group or the second group, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Friday. We get it. We know it's critical for um, child care. So as we get the information on in the next day or two, at least we'll be able to know the cutoff spots for you, if that makes sense. We'll try to get the cutoff spots to you so you at least know what day is as quickly as possible. Um, physical education, music, specials, there are a thousand questions around all of these. Um, coming from both a music and athletic house, um, there are a thousand questions just in my home about it. And a um, couple things to understand. We are going to do the best we can to give a physical education music, art, et cetera, experience to our students. Um, we're not going to put another layer of burden on teachers and students, though, with ridiculous requests. So we're not going to be making people change when they don't have lockers. We're not going to add stress to you with something that really should be a time when you can blow off some steam um, in something that you love. So our teachers are working real hard um, to develop plans that give you some semblance of a physical education model, of an art model, of a music model, of all the things that we know make school rich for a lot of young people and rewarding, but at the same time stay within the incredibly stringent social distance guidelines. For instance, physical education and, and music are 12 feet. Um, so as you might imagine, they'll look terribly different. But we're on it. Yes, you have to wear your mask during that time, uh, but we're on that. We're going to be on it with recess. Yes, we're going to have some type of recess. What it will look like? We don't know, but we're gonna have some type of recess. Um, yes, we're gonna have some type of physical education, music, art. Those are things as we get the structure formed now, we start to fill in some of those important, in, important dots for you. Um, and we know they're important and we don't ever wanna skimp on that. Um, daily schedule, basically in the, uh, in the buildings, the daily schedule is the same for hybrid with the exception of our three secondary schools, which are six through 12. Silas, Stimson, and, and Whitman. That'll release, same times, but they're going to release 50, 5 minutes early for a remote contact period. So for students that are fully remote, that'll be a, a, a contact period where they can catch up um, with, with their teachers. A um, couple of emails that are coming in. I don't want to miss anyone, so um, I got to do this. I try to avoid it, but now you all know my secret with the glasses, and now they're fogging up. Um, just trying to see if there's anything I'm missing. I don't want to miss anything for you. Um, yes, okay, so a, a real good question on masks, on buses. Yes, our bus drivers will f be fully aware of the need for students to wear masks. And our drivers are all in because they're protecting their health as well. Important thing to remember, our staff's all in. I mean, they're amazing. And, and, and while everybody out there in their own home has an idea what will work and won't work with the opening of school. In terms of protecting our kids and moving the instructional program forward, we have been uh, partnered with our teachers, our bus drivers, our administrators, our clerical unit, our parents from day one. In other words, that, that's one thing that's really cool about this place is that we don't fight over that. We really don't. We don't fight over much, but we especially don't fight over loving our kids. So our bus driver, we're all in. And what happened by moving the first day of school to September 8th, we gave ourselves a full week with these individuals to work, not just bus drivers, but everyone, to train people on contact tracing in terms of our administrative staff, to train people on signs and symptoms of COVID, um, to train people on how to work with little kids on washing their hands, or how to work with families and students on not being afraid of the masks and the requirements. We know that the social emotional uh, upheaval is huge. And so our social workers and psychologists and behavior specialists, they're going to help train us to make sure that we're better at working with the young people and the staff who are going to be under some tremendous pressure. But we're in it together. Again, we didn't create COVID, but we're certainly not going to let it beat us. And, and we're, we're in this together. So bus drivers will be trained. We promise you that. Um, 
He's fogged up when you put him on. Um, that's a thank you. I'll take that. Um, okay, a couple more questions on sneeze guards. I had two or three there, which is, which is great. Essentially, um, the sneeze guard, which I demonstrated uh, the other day to you, a student, it's on the elementary desk, and they're pretty, for a little kid, you're right in the middle of that thing, so it's pretty, pretty well protected. Um, for a high school student, you carry it with you and you set it up, set it up on your desk. Again, what is it doing? It's not instead of masks. It's in addition to as just another layer of safety and protection. We had a parent just ask too if, um, which is which is great. We're doing both methods. A parent just asked if the face guard could be instead of the mask. Face guards could be in addition to masks but they can't be instead of the mask because apparently they don't have the same um, ability to catch droplets as, as, uh, as masks do. So face guards can be in addition if someone chooses, but they can't be instead of. Um, again, another lunch question. Basically, we're eating in, how are we eating? We're eating in small groups. We're eating in um, small, small groups in the classrooms, outside if we can get out on some days, a lot of days we hope. Um, the only thing we haven't worked out yet, and she'll abuse the, our food service director, she'll, she'll work this out with the principals. Uh, she really does an amazing job. But um, one of the things they're working out is, do we send students down to the cafeteria to get their food, or can we somehow get the food to them? And we're working those things out. We have a couple of weeks to figure that out, but we do know we're eating in smaller areas, because what I explained before on the contact tracing, every time we eat in a smaller area, we saved the potential of 100 quarantines, and, and that's a legitimate number. That's no, um, you know, th that's not a made-up number. So we saved that, that potential, and we just thought that we just couldn't take that risk of closing ourselves down. Um, which leads me to another question, and this question is um, be built around how many student or staff COVID cases is it, it going to take for us to close the schools? Um, we're going to reconvene. Our Board of Education committed to reconvening after every single case. All right, I think that's important because we didn't want to pick a number. Three and you're done. The city said, I, I don't know, I think they said two and you're done. I didn't really follow that, but someone sent it to me. Um, we, we don't want to commit to that. We want to commit to, we have a responsibility to look at conditions after every case. Do we get a cluster? Are they from the same building? Are they from the same party? Are they from the same uh, soccer game? Um, Right? What are the ages of the students? What are the infected family situations? So it's, it's really changed our dynamic as educators in that we're going to have to factor all those things in. If we're looking, I'm telling you right now, if we're looking for the Board of Health or the state to make those decisions for us, I think we're going to be looking for an awful long time. So what I've learned this past month is um, it, could be, it could be a little lonely around here. So in other words, we're, we're on our own as a team. And I don't mean that, that we don't have a tremendous amount of support, but our board, our teachers, our parents, our staff, and our students, that's who we have to work with right now. And that's why we're trying to be brutally honest with everything with you, share it, try to respond to each of you personally, because we're in this together. Um, you know, I was trying to explain to a parent earlier today, there's no bonus in my life for not bringing every student back to school. That was everyone's initial desire. So, in other words, that is the goal, and, and, and we know that. So... We're in this in the same boat. We have the same end, end desires and end goals. And we are going to reevaluate each month. So the board is going to meet, well, twice a month. But, and reevaluate, do conditions by October 1st, let us bring more students back. Do consider by November 1st. Do we have less students? Let's be honest. Five or six weeks into this thing, this will either been a great success in districts across New York State or could be an abysmal failure. I mean, that's a reality. I don't know if we're supposed to be that honest, right? But this, and I don't, failure wouldn't be um, a disaster because we're dealing with young people and, and we have so many protocols in place like um, masks and, and, and our young people are cooperative and our staff's cooperative. So I'm not talking about a disaster that way, but I'm talking about a disaster in terms of contact tracing and shutdowns, right? We could be in those situations all over the island. So our current plan gives us four or five weeks of an easy start to, nothing's easy about it, but a, a slow start to kind of get our ideas in place on, on what we can and can't do going forward. And that, that's the, the planning behind all this. 
Um, finally, special education, ESL, all the services will be in place. Um, I know that seems difficult to, uh, to not accept because I think everybody's in great with accepting things, but it seems difficult to fathom that we could squeeze all those things in. We have to. In other words, you didn't ask for this. No one at home asked for this. No one on our staff asked for this. This is where we are. And, you know, we can run from it or we can square our shoulders and say, look, this is part of, uh, uh, this is part of the mental toughness that we teach. And we have a responsibility, as hard as it might be, to supply ESL and special education services as well as math services, reading services to our students, whether they're remote or in school and hybrid. We're not putting people in a situation where they're deciding between services and not services. If I don't come to school, I won't get the following, so I want to take a risk I'm not comfortable with. We're not doing that. In other words, when this is all over, and I hope it's over quickly, when this is all over, we go back to being a typical school district that hopefully is working as a team and all our progress continues. So the last thing we're going to do is burn bridges with any of you and any of us now when the idea is to get through it and get through it healthy with the best instruction we can. So that's kind of a, a, a summary on the, 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 I did about 12, on the 12 most commonly asked questions. I sent out others yesterday, if you recall. Um, they're starting to dwindle, and I don't mean dwindle because people aren't interested, but people are starting to, to get the flow of the things we're talking about. Um, we're definitely going to get it on again later in the week, but please, if you do have um, questions or concerns, just call an email. It's just so much easier. In other words, it, it, it just, and I'm looking here, um, it's just much, much easier for us to be able to deal with your issues individually and to deal with your questions individually rather than to try to make some mass statement that maybe only matches a third of the people in the room. Every one of your kids, just like every one of our staff members, is unique and special to us. And they're very special to you. So you deserve a call or an email back from us, not from some uh, dedicated robo site. From us to say how we're going to work as a team going forward. And our, our, our people are committed to that. You know, today I hadn't even hit send on a lot of the emails before one of the principals was jumping on with you as well to make sure that they had answered your questions. We're trying to do this the right way. And trust me when I say in our hearts that we don't want to disappoint you. So whatever we can do within the boundaries we have, we'll make it work. What can't we do? Right now we cannot bring in full elementary students. So I still get from people, and my heart goes out, I get it. Why can't we? We just do not have the square footage to do that and to stay within the six feet social distancing. Um, we could get to the point when we get a, a, a significant number of students possibly who, who, who don't attend school or conditions change and we're allowed to increase the or decrease the distance a little bit. We could get to the point where we bring more people in. Similarly, we could get to the point where we see a tremendous amount of, um, of safe school openings and we're able to push the boundaries a bit. Could go the opposite way also. But right now we want to take it week by week and do what's, what's, what's wise and what's best for you. We will be flexible. I use the word flexible all the time. Um, flexible means acting humanely. Flexible means acting as if it was your child or your, uh, your child sitting in the chair or your mom or dad or sister or brother in front of the classroom teaching. That's what flexible means. It means working with empathy and humanity. So I can promise you that. Okay, I promised to keep it around 30 minutes. I think we did so. We've responded to um, anything that came in. Um, Certainly, oh, there's one more. I just don't want to leave anyone hanging. Are the elementary schools ending 50 minutes earlier too? No. No, that's a remote connection period for the secondary level. So no, that, that's a good question. And I see one more popping up. Um, what classrooms we dedicate to lunch? We, I don't really know that yet. Um, in other words, we're allowing the high school schedules to kind of figure that out. There are certain things, and, and we will know it. It's not that I'm dodging the question, because it's kind of a, a basic one. But um, I've kind of left that to Mr. Murphy and Mr. Valamos, um, but we'll certainly find out for you. Okay, I know that they're listening, so um, I hope they're listening. So hopefully they, uh, they can find out for you. Yeah, so we'll, we'll find that out. And then there was one more I saw come in. Yes, they're like a trifold, the, um, the uh, um, 
In fact, I showed them yesterday. I apologize. I'll, I'll show them tomorrow. I promise. Um, I apologize because I put it in the car actually, to to show my my son my what my son and daughter both teach, and I put it in the car to show them what we're doing. But um, yeah, the 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 sneeze guard's a trifle, so I I apologize. It looks just like a, a, an item that sits and folds just like that, and I will show you the, all that again tomorrow. I didn't I didn't plan on redemonstrating today, but I absolutely will. That's on me. Um, okay, that's it on the questions. We will be returning. Again, emails and calls all day tomorrow. One of us will call you, okay? And I'm trying to do, actually, most of the main ones myself and then kind of putting them to the team who's way brighter than I am with the, uh, with the, to fill in the details. But Because I, I just want you to know that your questions are being reviewed by our administrators, our staff, and our Board of Education, every one of them. Um, every one of them is worthy of an answer. We can't always give you the answer we want, you want, but I guarantee I can give you an answer, and it's definitely going to be with care. So... Be well, um, and we'll check back in tomorrow. Thanks.